Okay, so today's video I'm going to teach you how to reseal a Komatsu hydraulic ram, how to get the piston off. Uh, all the procedures of resealing these hydraulic cylinders on uh, Komatsu excavators on the rams, uh, specifically this uh, 200 excavator. So I've got these rams right here. <clears throat> After you tear them off, the first step after you take off your hydraulic rams, the very first step is to undo, undo these bolts on side of your hydraulic tube. You can undo these. Um, they're 16 coarse thread, millimeter. You're gonna do those on your hydraulic ram and split your ram apart. So this is your gland. So as you take your hydraulic gland off with your rod what I usually like to do is stamp a letter this is an arm cylinder so I'll stamp a letter or put a stamp on generally one of these guiding holes so that I can get my hydraulic cylinder and rod to line up after I do that then I come here Split apart, move it back. I usually like to clean this before I break it apart as well on the hydraulic gland. So after you spread it apart, that seam stays clean and you don't get a lot of debris on your piston. And this is your hydraulic brake. So you have a gland, you got a hydraulic brake, and you have your piston. I'm gonna show you how to reseal all of these, okay? So what you're gonna to do, Komatsu's are really nice because they don't have any compression. They don't have any uh, torque on this piston. It's actually a set screw right here. So as you look, that set screw, and inside that set screw, it has been tapped with a prick punch. And that's to help keep that set screw from backing out. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and take it out right now. And it's actually pretty amazing how easy this is compared to, um, cat okay cat or any of the other hydraulic rams you have to have sometimes they're in there at 5,000 foot torque there's a nut on the back of that rock you pull that apart that is ruined so usually in your seal kits that Komatsu will give you ask for a new set screw okay because that's ruined so that literally is the only thing that's keeping it in there and so these are two 10 millimeter bolts and they fit right into that hole so I'm set up on my workbench out in the field doing this hydraulic ram they make it really easy to do things out in the field as long as you have the right sills and bushings. Okay, so I'm gonna grab my crowbar. Okay, and so you can literally just take your crowbar. I'm trying to do this one-handed and film. It's a little tough, but with ease, that that just spins off. Yeah, I can twist it with my hands. That's uncommon. Anybody that's ever done hydraulic rams knows that there's a nut on there that is torqued to either 3,000 to 5,000, sometimes even 10,000 on your bigger excavators on there, okay? I'll grab a smaller one here. Okay. So you literally just spin off your piston. YouTube. YouTube video. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so spin this off. So Komatsu makes it nice because when you have your own machine and you own it, instead of taking it into the shop 
and make it very easy to uh, change out pins, uh, leaky seals on your Komatsu um, instead of taking it into their shop and paying for them to do it. So I'm going to get a clean rag. Here, lay it down. Okay, so there's a few things I wanted to show you. Keep in mind. So this, make sure you can either take a picture or film it, whatever. Make sure that you get this hydraulic, uh, this is a hydraulic brake put on it the exact same way you took it off. So generally it's easy to tell because this has a cutaway for your gland. So when your gland comes down, it should fit in that slot right there. It's a machine finish. And that allows the oil to pass through here. Somehow bypass, I haven't actually studied it really big so I haven't looked at it. But I do know that there's this back notch, there's a bushing in here. And that back notch is actually towards the very back of the ram rod, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and take this off. And you're gonna want to take all this apart and clean it off all really good before you put it on, okay? I'm gonna take this off and I'm actually gonna set this bushing that sleeve right down into that break. Then I'm gonna pull off my gland. So out of all three of these things that you're gonna be resealing, the gland is generally the hardest. And I'm just gonna show you what I'm doing. I'm not gonna uh, sit here and have have you watch everything. I've already done uh, Three of them. I've taken this bucket cylinder off and put it on resealed it and I've done this stick Cylinder and now I'm working on my booms. I already have that one currently resealed just barely set it there I just wanted to say I just wanted to film this and uh, show you guys how cool it is and how easy it actually is to do this work now I believe what they were telling me is these rams are the same all the way up from uh, 200 maybe even a 150 or a 160 uh, maybe even smaller I haven't done smaller this is my first one that I've done on the newer this is a 200-8 dash the dash 8 excavators um, I also know that the Volvo has a nut on it but it has a left-handed threaded nut a keeper nut for the main nut and you can also tear those apart on your benches as well and that's a 330 Excavator. So I think that this for the Komatsu is the same for the 360, uh, the 490s, all the way up to even the 800s. Uh, I'm not sure about the mining division when you start getting into the bigger, bigger uh, PC 1200s and 1250s and stuff. But for this, um, it's kind of cool to, to know how to do this where you're out in the field or whether you have a shop and you tear these apart. You can do them literally with just a vise. And I'm just using a six inch vise. And tearing this apart you do have to have a crane if you don't have a crane you'd have to have um, something to move these around now this is heavy I'm a pretty good big guy I can move the bucket cylinder rod but these ones are pretty damn heavy I don't want to I don't want to hurt my back so it's easier to use a um, to use a forklift if you don't have a crane or a mini X or Need to get these around maybe even an engine hoist it might take a little longer you can do it okay so what I wanted to show you as I get this off I wanted to show you kind of the techniques that I've found in resealing this gland so the techniques that I've kind of okay as I set this down here you're gonna have a wear sleeve and this is your wear sleeve it's a wear bushing okay that wear bushing is pressed in there there is a snap ring right here that you take out. There's a snap ring. There's a snap ring right here, okay? And you can just remove that with uh, just a pick or the screwdriver. After you take this snap ring out, there you look for the seam. This little bushing is gonna look like this. Right here, here's a new one. And you're gonna wanna change these. You can see that has some sort of a some sort of a um, a nylon in there you can tell that this one's wore out and it's gone there's no more nylon in there you can actually see where some debris has actually been in there and scratched that uh, probably because my seals went bad and was allowing dirt and debris to get in here that's why they were leaking so 
uh, there is a split on this bushing. That bushing is split. And as you take that bushing apart, or as you uh, get in here, you'll see the seam of that bushing. And that's where you drive it down. Now I'm just using a simple flathead screwdriver. And some people will say, oh, you'll scratch your, your uh, housing. Mm, very minimal, very minimal. And if that, then you take some emery cloth and polish it up. Uh, and take the ridges out. So right here there is a seam. If I get my lighting in there to show you. Turn this. This way. This is the biggest pain at the bottom and when you reseal it. So that's why I want to show it to you. This seal right here. That seam. So as I, I want to take and put this on the corner of one of them edges. And as I do that I just take a small hammer and I just tap either a screwdriver or a chisel. Um, it's better to do something with it soft. And as you drive that out down, it's gonna peel the sidewall or that corner out and allow you to grab it. You can grab it and remove it and take it out. As you take that out, then while I'm all set up right here, I take the new one and I drive it in. And as I drive it in, you wanna use like an aluminum block and I usually use aluminum squared block and I just tap it around the edges and I'll just work it all the way back in there and put my set screen it's my sets my set ring uh, back in the groove make sure it seats okay that's the bottom part on the top part of this gland you also have another set ring okay and it holds in the dust seal so you can see, usually you're going to see oil coming out of the dust seal. That's because your dust seal goes bad and starts pulling in rock and debris. Uh, fine particles that actually wear out your other seals. So this is the main seal that generally goes bad. So as you take this apart, you take this snap ring out again. And uh, it's best to flip it over. And I just, again, use a chisel or a, or a small crowbar. And I stick my thing right up in, in that lip, okay? So as you get it in that lip, then you can drive it out. And you want to overhang your gland off the side. So as you do it, it allows some space for it to pop out. And it pops out pretty easily, okay? Once you're in there, I'm going to hold it, show it like this. So you got your seal, your, uh, your dust seal right here. There's nothing behind that. There's part of your gland. So you can see just how dirty this was in there. And then you actually have um, kind of a bushing slash, it's, it's a, uh, what are they called, a wear sleeve in there. Uh, and that's kind of made out of a copper fabric material. Okay, and then you'll have your main seal. You'll have a main seal right here. And it actually has two seals. Okay, and this one actually comes out really easily. That, that one is split in half. This seal split in half. You just get a pick in here and start popping them out. It's really crucial and important that you put the seals back in the exact same way that the seals were when you took them out. So sometimes when you get them apart, there's just a groove in here. You got to make sure that this wear sleeve goes in front of the seal. And same thing right here. You'll have another seal right here. And that seal you need to pop out. It's just this little thin seal, okay, because we've already changed this. And you'll have a little thin seal here and you'll have a little uh, stiffener ring that goes into that seal and that's a compression seal as well and so is this you want to make sure it's extremely important that that seal um, is facing this way so as your as your rod you want to make sure oh man where is it right here pull open the seal pack so i can show you guys because it's really critical this gets done that way. No way to do this. Set that there. Okay. So I'm just going to pull out the seal that I was meaning, one that's very easy to show on. Alright, so, so on this sill, you have an open ring right here, looks like that, okay, this is your gland sill, and what happens 
when you slide this gland seal on your rod, what that's doing is you want this seal, you want the close end facing forward, facing in the gland. So what happens, you want your oil pressure side on the, on the slotted hole. What happens is oil comes in here and it separates and actually spreads that open. And it doesn't allow, it actually pushes against the rod even tighter, allowing a seal to actually take place. And so this is uh, one of the seals. Just make sure when you're putting this in the gland that you have those O-rings or you have the open end of this seal facing the compression side of this gland. Okay, like that. You want your paint to be on the outside and you want this to be in there. Um, now we move to your piston. Your piston is fairly easy to do. Uh, the thing that you'll run into being the hardest is this also you'll have this uh, wear sleeve slash this uh, kind of a, a fabric bronze material. That's kind of hard to stretch over that. But it's not too bad. You can get it. There's wear sleeves on here and that piston's pretty easy to do. Uh, just o-rings and you have some wear sleeves and like I say that fabric seal as well and that's it so as you put all these together as you slap this on and everything goes back on the same way I advise taking pictures well it's your first one so you know which way the seals went when you took them out as you slide everything back on the thing that I found to be the easiest and pressing them together because now they're new seals they're not going to slide in there quite as easily as it came apart so as you get this one put back up and you get ready to insert your rod into the tube and everything is on i like to use this hydraulic oil uh, additive from cat i love it it actually is made it's a low friction it's actually made for hydraulic rams um, and the seals so i like using it to lubricate my seals and actually putting in the seals on the piston and then and the gland so as I do that I'm going to lube that up really well so it slides in easy uh, to your tube now what I found to be the easiest is as you get your tube set up here and your rod going in you have to have that rod out here in your tube uh, as it slides in um, nice and, and level as possible and as you get it in there you're going to find that there's going to be a split between your gland and your tube and it's going to be pretty damn hard to push it in by yourself so what i've got is a piece of all thread and now this particular size it's metric this is all thread uh it's a 16 coarse um thread and i actually cut it up and made my own puller bolts and it, it goes in so nice without that just go to your local hardware store and get some all thread that matches the same pitch uh in your diameter as your screws or your thread count and then you can just walk this gland in and suck it all down. Go ahead and torque these down. I don't have the actual specs. I'm just running them in with an impact. And I think just tight on that impact uh, should be good enough for what I'm what I need. You can get Komatsu. Uh, you can call the Komatsu uh, dealer and find out exact torque specs. I feel confident enough that I'm just going to use my Milwaukee impact. And so that's it. Uh, another thing to mind is you'll have seals also I would, I would recommend resealing your um, your steel lines on there as well the seal kit will come with that it'll also have seals in here uh, for your eyelet side for your grease seals uh, you can change those as well even change your bushing if you if they are wore out uh, so yeah like and subscribe to my channel uh, DM tech 101 and I uh, hope you guys like this video. Leave some comments of things I can improve on, what you like, what you didn't like. Uh, again, like I was saying, uh, one of the most important things on this hydraulic ram is that the seals go in correctly and that it stays clean during the process. Uh, cleanliness is important when you're working with these because just a, a small particle can cause a scratch either in this rod Pour on the piston or on that tube and you'll actually have oil bypass through there and you, your seals won't last that long. So again, uh, yeah, thanks for watching my video.